This message is for Captain Lozano. Captain Lozano, this is Raul Macias. I'm standing at uh, on Van Nuys Boulevard at Bradley Avenue. This is John's Liquor. This is where my brother came to buy beers for Chuy Soltero, though he denies it now. This is the biggest liar he ever met. Um, and he emerged from this store carrying a uh, six pack, I don't know, of bottled beers, maybe 12 pack, I don't know how these things come, but um, uh, most likely a six pack. And he got on the bike lane right here. So here's this John's Liquor right here. And this is, um, this is Tuesday, the 6th of June, 2023. It's a decrepit area here. And um, so he gets on his bike here. So here's the bike lane. So, um, of course, now again, this is John's Liquor. Right there. And this is a, kind of a panoramic view of Bradley. And um, so he's proceeding down. And I always wondered how fast... You know, he was going down this bike lane. Okay, now I think this uh, depraved bastard from New York, this white boy, was lying in wait. I sent you, and I don't have to give you a dissertation on what lying in wait means. This guy, you know, he's depraved, has no uh, consideration for life. It's a disgrace to humanity. Uh... You know, so he's wait, lying in wait, waiting for my brother to get to a strategic point. And I'm thinking, like, how fast was my brother going when he's on this bike? But see, these beers were a distraction. And then, of course, he's carrying them under his left arm, which leaves him open for a cold cock. Because he's, you know, he's, he's got his left arm down and holding those beers. So he has a, he's a righty. And this guy should know that because my brother beat the crap out of him and probably busted his jaw for him. Okay, so here we are at Bala Avenue. Here. So he made it here. Side of the former Tres Sierras, now El Toro Grande Market. And here's Bala Avenue. So he makes it across here. And I think this bastard, he chose this spot here because... Um, I don't know, I haven't been here in a couple of years. There was a vacant lot right next to the uh, Ciudadanía Americana. And that vacant lot was perfect because there'd be nobody in that area. There was a building next to it. I don't know if it's still there. It's a yellow painted building. I, yeah, I see it now next to Mike's. So you have Mike's Cafe. Then you have this yellow building that was vacant at the time then you have a vacant lot so you have so i see this gentleman see speedy's going so my brother was was pretty much jetting he was well depending you know we don't know how fast he was going but then uh see here's mike's cafe okay and here's this building i think it's still empty it doesn't look like anybody's in there but they've actually painted it and maybe somebody's be moving in there soon and here's the vacant lot. So, and here's Ciudadanía Americana. My brother, she said, uh, she looked out this window because she saw the paramedic vehicles were right in here somewhere. See, they were parked right here. So she saw the flashing lights. So she came out and looked out the window. She said she saw my brother laying right around here, around this spot right here. So what I think happened, this bastard, the depraved motherfucker, uh, was waiting for my brother right in here somewhere. They know that this restaurant is, um, you know, the doors are closed and people are not paying attention. So he might have been high, lying in wait right in here, maybe between a car. I like say right in here. There's just, you can even go up to here if you like, you know. There's nothing here. Look at this. It's just a, you know, this guy knew what he was doing, this motherfucker here. See? So he's, you know, I think when he saw my brother coming, he could be laying, he could be lying in wait here. So as my brother goes by him, he starts running behind him, and he catches up to him right right here, and he belts my my brother in the back of the head with a crowbar. It had to be a crowbar, man. There's no way he's gonna be waltzing around with a baseball bat. And he smacked him right here, and or maybe right in here, and my brother fell. Uh, she said she saw him 
laying on his back, face up, with blood coming off, coming out of his left ear. So obviously he got hit right on that vulnerable spot, and he was laying right here, face up. And the paramedics, there was one paramedic at at his at his head, and and the other paramedic at his feet, and they were asking him, "Can you get up?" And my brother was trying to get up, because I'm sure he was furious. He was thinking, "God damn, they set me up, man. That fucking Chuy Chuy Soltero knows what went down." I want you to drag that fat motherfucker into that. I want him picked up and taken in and put a light over that fat ass's head and he's gonna, he's gonna come up, he's gonna cough it up real fast, okay? Now my sister was out here, Leticia Hernandez, well, Macias, her maiden name, Hernandez was out here probably the day after and kept me in the dark as what the hell she was doing. Um, she, she came to the Sudandia Americana. I came out here two months later or a month later when I shot that video that I sent to you. And uh, there's a place called uh, Chayitos over there around, across the street somewhere. Well, they're gone now. They used to be there on the corner. It's uh, Lydia's beauty salon. At the time, Chayitos was there, and she, I went over to talk to her, and she said, yeah, the, a girl came in with a limp. And I said, oh, that was my sister, that jackass. She, she comes in there. She wanted to see if there was any cameras operational at that time. Okay, now, she, because she knew something went down here. He didn't simply fall off his bike. Chuy Soltero knows who this fucker is. Okay, my brother, I'm glad, told me about him before he was cold cocked because he was harassing my brother. I believe Chuy Soltero's sister knows who he is too. That whole family knows. The Haro family knows. I gave you the addresses. Those two families know what went down. I want you to speak to Patty Harrow because she told me on March 30th, the same day that that fat ass Chewy told me, Hey Ron, if, if Ray don't care, why do you care? That fat ass said that to me. Can you believe that, Captain? Saying that to me? I said, because he's my brother, you fucking Chewy, I'm going to find out who fucked him up. He's going to the joint, Chewy. Okay? And Patty Harrow tells me I walked over to her house. Another dimwit drug addict, and she tells me, Oh, yeah, you use a crowbar on him. How the hell do you know that? Well, you know, I said, Who told you, Patty? Well, you know, everybody's talking, yeah, like you, you know? And I was telling her brother, another basket case, Louie, alcoholic, smart ass. You know what he said, Captain? Well, you know, Ray, Ray um, uh, kind of saying he got it, he got what he, you know, kind of saying he got what he deserved, he got what he got coming to him. Uh, because he's always out there, you know, and, and I said, oh, yeah, yeah, real nice, you know, instead of not one of these bastards said, I'm sorry about what happened to your brother, because they're all a bunch of damn scumbag drug addicts. That's what they are. Well, there it is, Captain. Uh, this is where it happened. And if you, I don't know, if, uh, but what I understand, they took him so fast because the paramedics are right up the street that I believe a police wasn't even called out here and then that hospital was adamant that he fell off his bike and I understand the wound wasn't even examined. Those stupid asses over at that uh, Holy Cross, Providence Holy Cross, a bunch of stupid dimwits there. Bye.